Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this session, we will be learning about graphs in data structures. But before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's discussion. So, we will be discussing a brief introduction to graphs first. Followed by that, we will understand the graph terminologies. Up next, we will see the types of graphs available in data structures. After that, we will understand the representation of graphs. Then, we will look into the graph traversal. And finally, we will understand the application of graphs. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now, let's begin with the first topic, that is a brief introduction to graphs. So, what exactly is a graph? So, a graph is a data structure like any other data structure, example, linked list, arrays, etc. So, graph is a little different from the other types of data structures such as linked list and arrays. They are linear data structures, whereas graph is a non-linear data structure that consists of finite sets of vertices and a bunch of edges connecting with them. So, what are these vertices and edges? So, let us understand that a graph is usually represented by a set of vertices and edges. So, a vertex is the node present in a graph. Imagine that you are a group of five friends. So, each one of you is considered as a vertex and the network connecting you guys is known as an edge. So, the overall graph of you people can be considered as G and it is represented by vertices and edges set where vertices is you and the network connecting you guys is called as an edge. So here you can see it clearly. Each one of the friends is called as a vertex and the network connecting them is called as an edge and the entire graph is represented using a set of vertices and edges. Now moving ahead, we will understand the graph terminologies. Now at first we have the adjacency vertices and adjacency edges. So what are adjacent vertices? If there is an edge between two vertices, that is one vertex or one node is connected to another node directly using just one single edge, then those vertices are called as adjacent vertices. Now what are adjacent edges. If there is one common vertex between two edges, then those two edges are called as adjacent edges. Let's imagine this way. Let us imagine that we have three vertexes and these three vertexes are connected using two edges. So, here we have one vertex which is common between these two edges. So, such type of edges are called as adjacent edges. Next, we have the degree. In an undirected graph, number of vertices adjacent to the vertex is called as a degree. Next is the path. The path is considered as a sequence of distinct vertices such that two consecutive vertices are adjacent to each other. Up next we have the cycle. A path that has only one repeated vertices are called as first and last vertices. Followed by that we have the walk. The term walk is self-explanatory. A walk is the sequence of vertices and edges in the graph which is used to traverse through one vertex to another vertex. Now we have entered the next segment of this particular tutorial where we will be discussing the different types of graphs available. So at first we have the finite graph. So what exactly is a finite graph? A graph is said to be finite when the number of vertices and the number of edges are in a finite number or in a countable number. Now the next type of graph is the infinite graph. So what exactly is the infinite graph? So the infinite graph is a typical opposite of the finite graph. So this particular graph will not have countable number of edges and countable number of vertices. The image here is an example for a typical infinite graph. Now followed by the infinite graph we have the trivial graph. So what is a trivial graph? A graph is said to be trivial if there is only one single vertex without any edges. So this particular type of graph will only have vertex that is only one single vertex, not more than one, and there will be no edge. 
if you have just one vertex then there is no possibility of having an edge unless if you have one single loop type of edge which is connecting to itself but in a trivial graph we don't even have that we just have one single vertex so followed by trivial graph we have a simple graph so what exactly is a simple graph a graph is said to be simple if there is only one and one edge between each vertex so this particular example can be considered as a simple graph so here each and every set of vertices have one single edge between them now followed by the simple graph we have the multi graph so if there are multiple edges between the pair of vertices then this particular type of graph is known as a multi graph so here you can see that we have two vertices a and b and we have two edges connecting them not one but two but in a simple graph we were supposed to have just one edge connecting the vertices so this is the difference between simple graph and a multi graph so followed by multi graph we have a null graph so what is a null graph a graph is said to be null if there are only vertices and no edges between them so remember the trivial graph right we just had one single vertex but no edges but here we do have multiple vertices but no edges connecting them so this type of a graph is considered as null graph so followed by null graph we have the complete graph so what is a complete graph a graph is called as a complete graph where each vertex must be connected with the other vertices using the edges so the meaning of this particular type of graph is all the edges are connected to all the other edges using at least one single edge so here you can see a is connected to b d and c all together with at least one edge and similarly all other vertices are connected to each other with at least one single edge now followed by the complete graph we have the pseudo graph so what is a pseudo graph a pseudo graph is a graph where at least one vertex will have self looping type of edge so remember the self loop or self edge we have discussed in the trivial graph type so this particular type of an edge where it connects to itself is called as a loop or kind of self connecting edge so any graph that has this kind of a edge is called as a pseudo graph so followed by the pseudo graph we have the directed graph so what is a directed graph any graph is called as a directed graph where each edge has a direction associated with it so so far we have just discussed the edges which are connecting to one or the other vertex but there was no direction but here you can see that this particular edge has a direction that is from b to a not from a to b it is from b to a this type of edges which are directing the traversal of the graph are known as the directed graphs now followed by the directed graphs we have the regular graph so a graph is a regular graph where each vertex of the graph has the same degree now here you can see all the vertices have the same amount of degree that is the connection between all the other vertices so the degree of a is 3 so the degree of b is also 3 and the degree of d is c and similarly the degree of c is also 3 so what i mean to say is all of these vertices have the same degree that is 3 now we have the weighted graph so what is a weighted graph a weighted graph is where each edge holds some weight that denotes the traversal cost through those edges now here you can see that all the edges have a different weight the edge from a to b has the weight 5 and the edge from a to c has the weight 9 and the edge from c to b has 2 and the edge a to d has 8 and finally c to d has 7 so all these values are the weight or the cost to traverse from a to another vertex so so from a to b we have the cost 5 and a to c we have the cost 9 and similarly c to d we have 7 and so on now followed by the weighted graph we have the connected graph so what exactly is a connected graph a graph is said to be connected where each pair in the graph is connected followed by a connected graph we have the disconnected graph so it is a typical opposite of the connected graph a graph is said to be disconnected where each pair in the graph is not connected to each other now next we have the cyclic graph 
So a graph is said to be cyclic if it contains at least one cycle in a graph. That is one complete traversal connection. So A can be traversed again from traveling A to C, C to D, D to B and B to A again. So this type of a graph is called as a cyclic graph. Now next we have the acyclic graph. So it is the typical opposite of the cyclic graph. So here you cannot traverse to A again by traversing from A to C, C to D and there is no connection between D to B. So the complete cycle is not available here. This type of graphs are called as acyclic graphs. So moving ahead we have the graph representation. So generally there are two different ways to represent the graph data structure. They are using adjacency matrix and adjacency list. So what is adjacency matrix? So adjacency matrix is a sequential representation. Adjacency matrix is used to represent which nodes are connected to which node. If there is an edge between two vertices, then the value of the corresponding element of the graph is one, otherwise zero. If there is any weighted graph besides then zeros and ones, we can store the weight of the edge as that particular number. Suppose that there is a connection between A and B and it is represented as a weight of 5. Then there is a connection. So we will use the connection as true, but we will not represent it as 1. Instead, we will use the weight that is 5 to represent it as 5, not as 1. If there is no weight, then we will represent it as 1. And if there is no connection, then we will represent it as 0. Now, undirected graph representation. So here you can see how we have represented a graph. So there is no connection between A to A, that is there is no loop. So the value will be zero. If there was a loop and if it was represented with a weight, then we could have written a weight here. Since we do not have weight, then the no connection is represented as zero and a connection is represented as one. We have a connection from A to B. So we have represented it as one and similarly to A to C, so and so on. Now directed graph representation. So the simple difference between the directed and undirected graph representation is we did not have a direction in the previous segment but here we do have directions. So B is connected to A but A is not connected to B. So we will write it as zero because the control is traversing from B to A but not from A to B. So we need to take care of the traversal of control. So we are representing as zero and you can see from D to B we have one connection and the traversal is in the direction of D to B. So we will have one there. So here we have D and B. So we have one. So in that way we represent the directed graphs. Next undirected weight graphs. So this was what we discussed before. Instead of zeros and ones, we will represent the weight here. So we do not have a connection between A to A. So that is zero as usual, but we do have a connection from A to B. So we have represented it with a number that happens to be the weight of the edge. And remember, we do not have the direction here. This is undirected weighted graph. Now, if it were the directed weighted graph, then we could have seen the direction and represented the number with the weight. Now after this, let us look into the adjacency list. So what is adjacency list? Adjacency list is a linked representation. In this representation, we maintain the list of its neighbors for each vertex in the graph. Every vertex of the graph contains the list of adjacency vertices. Array of vertices which have vertices indexed by each vertex number for every vertex, the array element points to the linked list of the neighbors of the vertex. So this might be a little complicated to understand. So let us understand this using an example. So directed graph representation implemented using linked list. So this is the directed graph we are using. So you can see that A is not connected to anything. So we have ended the address of next location as X, but B is connected to A and C is connected to A. Similarly, D is also connected to A. So that is how we represent the directed graphs using linked list. Next, we have directed graph representation using array. 
So A is not connected to anything. So we have represented as 0. And B is connected to B and as well as A. So we have 1 there. And C is connected to B. So C is also connected to A. So we have 2 there. D is connected to A, C and B. So we have 3 there. Now we have the graph traversal. So graph traversal refers to the process of examining each edge and vertex in a graph. Graph traversing can be performed in two ways. The first one is breadth first search or BFS algorithm. BFS starts traversing the graph from root node and explores all the neighboring nodes. Then it selects the nearest node and explores all the new nodes. Q data structure can be used in BFS algorithm. So the following image depicts the BFS algorithm working. It chooses the nearest node first, then it traverses to all the other nodes. So followed by BFS algorithm, we have the DFS algorithm, that is the depth first search algorithm. DFS starts traversing a graph from the initial node of the graph and then it goes deeper and deeper until it finds the node has no child. Then backtrack from the dead end towards the recently explored nodes. Stack is used for BFS algorithms. So this particular GIF image can be considered as the graph traversal which is performed using DFS algorithms. So if you don't know much about DFS and BFS algorithms, don't worry about that. Those particular tutorial videos are added in the description box below. You can go through it and understand BFS and DFS algorithms in a much better way. Now we will go through some of the applications of graphs. So some of the major applications of graphs are used in the websites, Google Maps and social media websites like Facebook and some security systems and also software programming. So with that, we have come to an end of this tutorial. If you have any queries regarding the topics discussed in this particular tutorial, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our experts will be happy to solve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.